Hi everybody, uh, welcome to Animateka Pro. My name is Veljko Popovic. Hi everybody, my name is Milivoj Popovic. Uh, we are um, co-owners of uh, Prime Render Studio situated in Split, Croatia. Yeah, so actually when we uh, got together in the uh, late 90s and beginning of uh, the new millennium, we yeah. opened up a studio that primarily did uh, actually games. So we did, uh, yeah. uh, in the beginning we did casual games uh, and uh, we actually were developing our own uh, 3D engine back in those days. So for us, moving into VR was not something which was completely new and completely strange because actually the quality of the and the, and the restraints of, of VR kind of remind me of those early days. Yeah, VR is a lot like uh, creating content for gaming actually because gaming is also real-time rendered which means you cannot pre-render it. Everything is you know being calculated in real time. So you have a lot of constraints and you have a lot of opportunities. Yeah, well actually, uh, because we were creating a lot of creative content for computer games, so we were used to creating content uh, that has a high um, uh, quality regarding uh, the creativity and the imagination, but also was very technically precise. Because when you're creating content for uh, real-time rendering engine or computer games, it has to follow specific rules uh, for content creation in such a medium. So when we started out, we already knew how to approach creative ideas within these constraints. This really helped us uh, a lot uh, when we started working in VR. I would say the most important thing when you start working in, real, in VR is just not to underestimate uh, the technological side of it. Uh, you know, your assets and everything you're doing really has to be thought of as something that is going to be made into VR. So it's very important to uh, do your due diligence and, and do, do your research and have a good uh, technical director. Yeah, so uh, back uh, about, I think, four or five years ago, we were approached by a German company called Imagination First, and they had an idea to create a VR ride for a theme park in China, of all places. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so immediately we said, yeah, fine, yeah, we can do VR, well, although we, we've never done VR yeah. up until that moment, but just because we had such a vast experience in uh, computer um, uh, creation, uh, computer game creation, we thought it would be some, something that we would would be capable of doing. So we actually embarked on VR uh, about four years ago doing this commercial project. It took us about nine months. Uh, we did the first VR uh, using uh, Unity. Uh, so it was really a, 
learning process for us. Yeah, it, it was a lot of fun though. It was a lot of fun uh, exploring. I, I mean, entering VR is, is really like entering a new playground. And that was certainly one of the reasons why we took on the challenge. Uh, just because it gave us the opportunity also to play with VR, to explore it and to do it in a commercial when when you have to do something for a client the the downside is you're doing it for a client the upside is you really have to learn how to fulfill certain tasks so you're kind of forced to not run away from problems but face them head on yeah. and uh, i think that was that was one of the most important things that we got from that experience yeah so after we finished this uh we are film we we kind of thought yeah uh, we, we're we're now prepared to try and embark on a uh, on a real experiment and that's creating our own short vr film or a vr experience So it was uh, about uh, two or three years ago that we started working on our VR project called Dislocation. And uh, immediately we kind of, because the film, previous film that we've done was actually uh, 2D animation cyclist, so a traditional film. Yeah. And we were uh, eager to uh, embark on a project that's going to be technically more uh, challenging and uh, uh, more experimental in the usage of technology. So uh, when we started working on the VR project, we immediately were thinking about these high tech solutions, uh, how to uh, create this VR film uh, that can be really unique and that can uh, allow us to explore uh, different techniques and different technologies uh, that can be used in filmmaking. Yeah, I would say that we always kind of thrive uh, and actually put ourselves even maybe deliberately in these situations where we're forced to uh, explore new ways of uh, filmmaking uh, yeah. because just by exploring these new things you put yourself in a good position of creating something new, fresh and original and I think we always kind of strive, even from the beginnings, uh, to have our films feature some of those challenges or something like Planimo had an orthographic camera, which was, you know, it was an odd choice. Yeah. <laughs> it was an odd choice, but it kind of put us in this position where we had to rethink things. And I think uh, our approach to VR uh, was the same. We, we saw this medium and we asked ourselves, you know, how can we push the boundaries of this medium and how can we really approach it not in a way that you're taking the same thinking and the same philosophy that you had you know in, in classical cinema and trying to warp it into VR but yeah. rather just seeing like a blank slate okay this is the tool this is the medium uh, how can we approach storytelling uh, in this medium yeah, so we, we kind of surrounded ourselves uh, with different creative thinkers and uh, tech and guys who are maybe more inclined toward technology, but using technology in a, you know, this kind of weird or creative way. Yeah. Uh, immediately, even uh, when we were working on the script for the film, I uh, contacted my good friend uh, and also a band bandmate. Alan Celic, who's a yeah. fantastic dancer, pantomime teacher here in Split, in Zagreb, Bosiek and a lot of other places. And we decided to try uh, this, to use this VR uh, project that we're working on as a collaborative piece between us 
and Alan and see how we can uh, work with a dancer to create a unique VR experience. Yeah, I would say that um, when we started thinking about VR uh, and, and how to approach storytelling in it, uh, for us it was obvious that we wanted to approach it more like a theater Sort of, uh, sort of like art performance yeah. piece, more like R a performance. Yeah, piece. yeah. Uh, rather than you know being a, uh, being like a story driven uh, narrative film. Yeah, when you when you think about VR, when you think about films, immediately you think about camera angles, uh, editing techniques, uh, yeah. uh, post processing techniques, and all these things, which kind of all disappear once you dwell, in, once you go into this realm of virtual reality because actually you no longer have all of these tools. I think for us, the way we understood VR, it was much closer to, uh, a be, uh, to observing a, uh, a, a theater piece or a performance piece performed by an artist in front of you, where you are invited to explore this, um, um, this movement of the dancer and and in the, the space, and the space yeah. that he that he is in. So this was our approach, and this is why we actually use the Allen. Uh, we uh, use motion capture technology to. Yeah, capture. This was the first time that we actually used. Uh, yeah, you know, I told him. I can just say I told him. You know, Velko, animators are always the most expensive thing in our budget. <laughs> you know, why don't we just use eliminate motion. animators? motion capture yeah and you know and that was uh, that was one of the reasons and uh, I think it worked out pretty well <laughs> yeah for this film it was uh, our idea was our creative idea was to marry this world of virtual reality which in itself is at the same time realistic but also stylized yeah. so immediately you are put in this situation which is both uh, you have this sense like you're in, you're in this real space but also you have this uh, sense that you're in a stylized environment in a virtual re uh, environment. yeah i mean for us we didn't want to make it like uh, really realistic yeah. in a sense trying to recreate uh, some space some realistic everyday space so this idea of actually uh, removing people from this real world, real space and putting them into something that is more graphical yeah. and marrying uh, the fluid motions and the real world motions that we got from motion capture seemed like a very, very good fit. Yeah, uh, so it us. was uh, the, our approach was mixing uh, reality with uh, surrealism. And I think that's in the root in the root of our approach uh, for VR, for especially for this project uh, that we're uh, talking about right now. I would say the advent of uh, real-time uh, rendering generally in storytelling and in animation is a very, very important milestone. It's something that's, you know, fresh, it's happening now. And the technological strides uh, that are being made every day are, are really, really amazing. Yeah, for me it was also a chance to again uh, feel like a pioneer, uh, you yeah. know, uh, exploring no man's land, you know, we were working on this VR project, a lot of the visual solutions that we needed uh, actually did not exist up until the moment that we decided to create them. Yeah, yeah, I remember searching on the forums and trying to find some solution and then you realize, you know, you're kind of... Uh, Trailblazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People were, you know, okay, well, let us know if you solve this. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there was a lot of uh, emails uh, sent to Unreal, you know, we discovered this, or you, you could do yeah. this uh, yeah. inside VR and things like this. So for us, it was uh, VR once again, I think, uh, reinforced uh, this idea inside our studio and our creative process, uh, how fun uh, and how exciting it is to. Uh, explore new grounds and uh, create new visuals and uh, approach new technologies uh, with a creative outlook uh, and try and create something which is unique, which is different and which can transport the viewer inside a co uh, completely new and uh, different world. I think uh, the idea of working with uh, real-time uh, rendering is really liberating because uh, you, you are kind of 
uh, free of that uh, laborious and tedious post-processing, uh, rendering and uh, compositing yeah, part of filmmaking. Yeah, you did uh, exchange it for uh, something else, which is, you know, the pre-production and the preparation of assets for VRs. I would say the more, uh, you know, the beginnings are more complicated, but once you get everything set up, uh, it, it's, you know, it's much more easier and much more direct. Yeah. And uh, I would say it, uh, how it changed our thinking in storytelling is, um, I would say, more opened uh, doors to possibilities and uh, new ways of engaging people. And uh, what I yeah. really liked about the, uh, VR is the power to invoke emotions. So, so that's definitely that's definitely there. It's uh, it's especially because it's it's a fresh thing. It's uh, very it's very powerful in uh, producing and getting people to feel emotions, to to feel empathy. That's one of the reasons why we actually choose VR for this project because this project is really all about empathy. It's all about emotion. Yeah. It's uh, you know. So so I think. Uh, as, as a tool for eliciting those things, I think it's very, very, uh, very yeah. effective. And also we, we, ex we are now exploring different ways of how to work inside VR. So how to bring our, uh, for example, how to bring our feeling of, uh, of, uh, that we uh, explored in our previous films inside VR, like using a tilt brush, quill and all these different yeah. tools to create these. Uh, environments which have a painterly feel to them which have uh, so we are now uh, doing what we've always done and that is uh, exploring new technologies and finding new ways how to use them to create uh, fantastic and interesting worlds and uh, create films that will engage uh, the audience and most of all uh, deliver uh, messages uh, through a powerful medium that kind of sticks with the audience once they uh, finish watching the film, yeah. Yeah, I think nobody can leave a VR experience, uh, you know, without a good, being a good VR a good uh, without being affected, a bad way or in a good way. And it's, it's really, just vomiting. <laughs> yeah, it's really, uh, you know, we cannot understate uh, the, you know, importance and the fact that this is an emerging technology, and it has some extremely, you know, beneficial sides. But it also is a tool that needs to be uh, wielded cautionly uh, because of motion sickness and, and you know, the technical uh, barriers that it has right now. So that's something to take into consideration for sure. And we're very excited to keep on exploring VR, to keep on, you know, exploring storytelling and different ways of doing that. And, you know, taking the ideas that really are close to our hearts and that matter and finding new innovative and interesting way of presenting those ideas and uh, you know kind of making people a part of those worlds yeah and i hope uh, you'll be joining us on this adventure that we are embarking on in this project and our future projects regarding vr and hope to see you somewhere with the headset and yeah, I would say like virtual presence now has, uh, I think people are a little bit sick of it. We Ooh. just want to, <laughs> we want to kind of have the real people. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, uh, virtual is great, but we're also looking forward to seeing you in person uh, in the future. So uh, yeah, is, is it our time? Yeah, I think, I think it's it our time. That's all. That's yeah. all we got. All, that's our allotment. That's our allotment. Okay. So uh See you, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this, uh, you know, talk. And uh, we're looking forward to hanging more with you guys. Bye.
Okay, welcome back. My name is Manu Weiss and I'm the host of the Q&A today. And our guests now are the Popovich brothers. Welcome. Hi. Hello. <laughs> okay. So how are you guys doing? Uh, doing good, doing good. We are in different locations. I am right now uh, a little bit quarantined, not a lot, just like, uh, you know, half quarantine. <laughs> and Veljko is at the studio. Hi, everybody from the studio, not quarantined. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we have like a few questions for you. And the first one will be from Igor. And he says, hey, Pop Popovich bros, how do you manage to work so much in different fields like animated shorts, developing an animated feature and paying a special attention to VR animation as well? Probably you have to, you have to do also some commercial project on top of it. Yeah, not if you can help it. Yeah, <laughs> screw commercial projects, art all the way. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, um, uh, we're just uh, uh, passionate about creating and uh, it's uh, something that's with us 24-7 uh, or at least 12-7. <laughs> so we, uh, there's always uh, projects that we're interested in, projects that we're developing, that we are excited to jump on and ideas. And we just like to talk, me and uh, Billy Boy, we just talk a lot. When we talk, projects happen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and we also started from, you know, it was like 2002 and we did a lot of different things just to kind of survive before we really got into the artistic side of things. We were doing games, we were doing architecture visualizations and all of this stuff. And it kind of uh, forced us to explore a lot of different avenues in, uh, you know, digital creating. So that kind of stuck, stuck with us. So speaking of the feature film that has been mentioned, um, is, has it something to do with VR or not at all? Or is it like a traditional? Well, we kind of, we kind of, <laughs> we, kinda, we, we, we have like, uh, the, fe the feature is not going to be VR because doing a feature film in VR is pretty. In yeah, yeah I, I don't even know how someone would, uh, would go about doing this. What people do is, and I think I, I'm not a fan of it. They take these large projects and then make episodes in VR. Exactly which are really not episodes, but just like the, the thing kind of abruptly stops and then you're waiting for a year to, to start it up again. So I think uh, VR is not a medium for, for feature uh, at the moment. But do you see like incorporating like VR tools for, I don't know, pre-production for the feature film or do you know, like VR, we don't want this for this particular project? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, go very cool. Yeah, I, me. Okay. You. 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 Me? Me? Is it me? me? <laughs> it's me. Okay. okay, it's me. Okay. Uh, so, so I was like... Uh, yeah, I, I, it was at me. It's me. Okay, it's you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We're wasting a lot of time here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no more joking. <laughs> serious talk, serious talk. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, VR tools are, are, are great. There are some tools that are developing that are really nice to explore the you know, spatial aspect of everything. I think VR is still not quite there that it can be used really super comfortably. And, uh, you know, just like, okay, let's put it in there because it adds a lot and, you know, doesn't sub uh, subtract anything. I think we're not there yet. So I think uh, using VR in uh, storytelling has to be calculated and, you know, it has to have a good reason. I wouldn't just, you know, throw it in there because it's there. Yeah. So but how, what would you advise to somebody who just starts out with VR? Because now like with the Unreal 5 demo and everything, people think they, they don't have to learn like uh, proper 3D production anymore. What would you advise somebody who's starting out where it yeah, it's where yeah. Actually, in VR, you now have the button. The button make fantastic film, and you press it, and then uh, yeah, it's just, pretty great. It's pretty great. Add I theme, love it and then it's Western theme, or you know, stuff like this. Now, actually, the problem with VR is uh, and uh, with um, real-time rendering 
is you can get fantastic results by uh, 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 taking stuff from the internet which other people meticulously made. But as soon as you try and create something your, of your own, you have to be super aware of the technical difficulties and uh, technical requ requirements of each element inside VR because VR will make you pay for every sloppy UV map, yeah. for every overlapping geometry, for every uh, dense geometry, and uh, you know, for all these shading, normals, vertex problems that usually maybe in the pre-render stuff you just kind of you know, kind of render it out and hope for the best. Here in uh, in real time rendering, it all comes comes knocking sooner or later in the production. So the best thing is to be super prepared and make clean, uh, deliberate uh, objects, animations, and content inside real time rendering engines. Yeah, I would also say that these uh, things kind of add up. Uh, in a VR production, you know, all of these little uh, kind of corners that you're cutting. Uh, they add up during the time and then, you know, and also, I mean, it's a scary thing when you have to build the whole project be because if you cannot build it, then people cannot watch it. And that's kind of like, uh, I would say, especially scary uh, and inherent to VR because, I mean, when you're just uh, chumming out JPEGs, you know, you know, in the end, you can put it all together. So we had, you know, like a f few scary moments where we were, oh my God, is this, is this gonna build? You know, is this gonna work? And you know, if you cannot make it like build, then you have nothing. So that's a special thing for VR. Any other questions in there? I see someone asking I, about uh, me being I, the pretty one. No, I think it was, uh, yeah, you know. Just quickly answer that. <laughs> yeah, it's a fan question that I received and I just put it out there. It's not me, it's just, you know, it's what people wanna know. It's, you know, and uh, yeah. So I also want to say uh, hello to Matea and to all of our dear friends from uh, Anima Fest and uh, who are there and they're not asking any, uh, you know, subversive questions. questions. So we appreciate that. Okay, so we have indeed like uh, another question from uh, Vesela and she's asking, or he, I'm not, no, I she. she. Whatever, sorry, excuse me. Um, I like how you take new technical challenges, but also remain recognizable artistically. You manage to bring your style despite the new tech and environment. Great work. It's probably more like a comment than a question. Yeah, I think it's, uh, uh, if I can comment on the comment, <laughs> I think once you, uh, you if you start uh, from an honest position uh, where you are trying to create is create something which is, your own, it's not like, oh, I want to recreate something somebody else does, then you always end up looking authentic, I think. When you try to copy, then, then you go into this no man's land. But when you, when you go from a starting position of, uh, I want to create something which is my own, then you always kind of draw from the same, same pool of, of imagination. And this, this keeps your signature visible throughout Different, different techniques yeah. and different films and uh, different projects and stuff like this. So this is actually why we like to collaborate with other people because sometimes you get kind of sick of your own head and you want to move <laughs> outside it. And then the best thing to do is to collaborate with different artists. They kind of push you in a different direction. Yeah. So you were talking about this location in your presentation. Uh, you just like recently finished it, I think. Um, yeah. Have you shown it already in the public? And if so, how was the reaction to it? Yeah, we, we, we had uh, one official Carilla. screening of the film, <laughs> one official screening at uh, Ottawa uh, International Animation Film Festival. Yeah, and, uh, but uh, we also had one uh, unofficial guerrilla screening as, uh, as uh, I wouldn't say a part of Anima Fest because- We would say the not, underground. <laughs> underground part of anima fest uh... but yeah we did uh, we did uh, rent a small space and then grab uh, un un unwilling individuals and drag them to to <laughs> check out or test out our vr so the the reactions were really interesting ranging from uh, some actually we had one girl and she was like uh, in a fetal position <laughs> like this <laughs> 
And be honest to God, she was like this. Is it over? Is it over? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, especially the last scene where, where that, uh, you know, scary, scary kind of guy. And that's actually my also my reaction to many VR kind of things. I'm always a little bit, you know, I have to take off my headset and just make sure, okay, I'm still here and everything is okay. You're going to survive. So, yeah, we had some it's, very, it was very nice to have uh, the opportunity to show to our colleagues and a lot of people that were there at Anima Fest, a lot of our friends that we didn't see for a long time. So it's yeah. really nice uh, to, you know, kind of get them in there and, and share this experience with them. But uh, what I really took uh, from this experience is uh, 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 Vanya Andrievich, our distributor, she actually sh show, uh, saw the film as a 360 video inside uh, YouTube before and uh, stuff like this. And then when she saw it in VR for the first time, she, you know, she said, yeah, this is it. It's completely a completely different thing watching the film inside VR than watching it on a YouTube video as a 360 Absolutely. video. And she she was like, now I Thank I get know. it. And I was like, that's okay, the, yeah, this is... Thing. I mean, you can talk about VR all day long, but if like people never experienced it, you, they don't really understand what, what, what you're actually talking about. So it's always like super um, important to actually uh, get people into VR uh, to yeah. show them what it actually means. Um, Absolutely. So does that also mean that um, people that you showed it to, was it also like sometimes their first experience with VR? For, for, uh, some, for many of them, I think it was not because they're festival goers and they had the opportunity in the past few years to check out VR, right? Misha? Uh, I would say uh, for me, that's kind of one of the biggest challenges when working in VR is just to... Um, a lot of times people are focused and fascinated by the technology and that can sometimes get in the storytelling Absolutely. because you kind of see them, oh my God, looking at the stars, you know, look at the stars and kind of stuff like that. <laughs> so it's, you know, uh, that is definitely a challenge that's there for people who are, you know, first time in VR because they're really like exploring the technology and uh, the world of VR and, you know, they can sometimes lo lose the track of the story. So, um, uh, you know, but that's, that's just a unique challenge that is faced when you when you present such a cutting edge technology. Yeah. But there's also those tech tech savvy viewers. Yeah, they're yeah, not yeah. really they're like, mm, is there, yeah, I see. Is it, is it a polygon flickering there yeah, in the yeah. background? It's like because you can see those. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah. putting their heads inside the rocks, you know, just yeah. to see, okay. <laughs> As like, you know, <laughs> that's totally true. <laughs> I mean, speaking of, I mean, um, I personally, I'm not a gamer, but like when, when people talk about VR, they always have like games in mind and they always think like VR is a game. And yeah. again, I'm not a gamer, but I'm definitely more engaged and faster engage on a on a emotional high when I watch uh, when I play a game basically or rather than watching a traditional film, and because I'm much more physically engaged in it, like it depends on the game obviously. But um, how much interactivity do you think is needed in a like in a successful, impactful experience, a VR experience? Uh, Obviously, there is not like one way on how to go about that. But I mean, I know that people sometimes have expectations when they hear like, I yeah. they want to do something in there. How much interactivity do you think is necessary uh, to actually do like this successfully? Or For me, it's uh, the, the, the most uh, frustrating VR Zero experiences. <laughs> For me, the most frustrating uh, VR experiences were those where you are supposed to do something and then you're, you know, with the controller trying, is, am I supposed to do this? Should I, am I picking this up or what's, what's going on? Am I stupid? Is this VR stupid? Somebody stupid. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for, for me, I think film, uh, filmmaking uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, not so... Uh, VR works at this point, I think, with minimum interactivity. And for us, we, we have a small point of interactivity in our film, and it's, uh, uh, it's a specific element that we needed to, uh, to engage the audience to do something. So, uh, and it's one of those things where, where I cringe the most because some people are just afraid to do anything inside VR. 
and then we have a voice telling you after 10 seconds if you're not to continue please move the headset and then once, yeah but the, the, the motion the motion is a little bit unnatural because you have to go inside the head of the character and people are kind of screamish to do it it's not something that you you know but we want it to kind of also you know have this little bit of interactivity just to you know put you more inside and kind of uh, put you aware of the story and the progression of the story but i would also agree with velko that interactivity is not at all a necessary thing in in vr when you're you know if you have a story that you want to tell uh, you can do that definitely. I mean, interactivity is certainly an interesting feature of VR that can be used in a very powerful way. But I would always uh, avoid using something just because it's there, you know, mm -hmm. just like a gimmick. Let's just put something because, you know, we can. But we did have a lot of times when we were pitching our film. And then the first question would be, what's the interactivity with it? That was a bit of, uh, it was a bit uh, annoying. <laughs> It's like, we're not creating a game, we're creating a VR experience, it's a film. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any interactivity? Can you do move? No, no, you can. <laughs> so people expect it, kind of. Exactly. When you go into, into VR, they, 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 they want to be entertained in this kind of way, which, uh, yeah, sometimes can be, like I said, but I th usually. But I think uh, also, you know, it's uh, for a lot of people, it's overwhelming as it is. Yeah. So I don't think right now, you know, there's especially right now, we, we, the way we approached it is like a, a, like a play or a performance that's, you know, you're kind of in the middle of this world and observing. Okay, cool. Well, we're actually at the end of the Q&A session. Thank you so much for, for being here. And uh, I guess uh, enjoy the rest of the festival and see you around. Yeah. Thank you so Hi, much. It was such a pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.